Welcome to the last session of the course Multi-Rate Statistics with R. Today we will deal with a topic for ecotoxicologists, namely the principal response curves. Principal response curves are used to analyze mesocolumn studies. You might have already read about mesocolumn studies, you might have worked with our mesocosms here at the university. So mesocosm studies are settled somewhere between laboratory and field studies. Also regarding their relevance and their experiment, experimental control that you have. They are used for higher tier risk assessment and you are looking mainly on effects on community structure and uh, ecosystem functioning. So how is such a mesocosm study generally performed. Well, you have your mesocosms and you treat each mesocosm with your test items, or your substance, and then you sample uh, communities during your study. So you have multiple type points. So they collect a lot of data. You have uh, many time points, you have a lot of species, so it's not easy to analyze such data. So clearly we need uh, multiple techniques to analyze, summarize and interpret this data because we have multiple species. So today we will discuss uh, this paper, Multivariate Analysis of Stress in Experimental Ecosystems by Principal Response Curves and Similarity Analy Analysis. And uh, this paper was written by uh, Paul von der Brink and Kayo Terbrag. There are also one or two uh, follow-up papers which are also worth a read. So let's start with the results of such a, a mesocolumn study because you might have already seen such a figure in uh, publications. So we see here the, the time course of the study and we see that we had multiple applications for substance and we see uh, time covers of the different treatments and also some species. So let's see what does this mean and how did we get there. Um, as I already said we have a lot of data, multivariate data, with multiple time points from multiple mesocosms. So one idea would be just to plug this data into an RDA. So using the species data as response and treatment time and the interaction with treatment and time as uh, explanatory variables. So if you do that, you get such a ordination plot. See, it's, we have a lot of data. The ordination plot is complicated. So here we have colored different treatments. And within the treatments, points are connected with the time course. And you can already spot, okay, we have here, uh, black is the control, so we have here some, perhaps some effect of the highest two treatments, but it's not easily spotted, it's not easy to show, so perhaps we need a better idea. So one idea that you might have is just to remove the effect of time, so this is called partialing out. So we can do this. And then the first axis displays only treatment and the treatment time interaction, but not uh, the time because we removed it. So you already see, okay, that the first axis discriminates between control and treated mesocosms. However, the time course is still very unclear and also the, the plot is uh, very cluttered and hard to interpret. Well, the solution is the PRC, the principal response curves. So what are they doing? Well, they only look at the first axis. So we look only the information on this axis. You can also look at the other axis, but generally you display only the first axis. Um, the side scores, which are the points here, are displayed as contrasts to the control. So 
what does this mean? Well, it's for each time point, you simply plot the difference between the control and the treatment, also here. So this means that the zero line is the control, and everything is above is the difference of this treatment to the control. And we also have uh, species scores in RDA. These are dis also displayed. So there you see um, which species are associated with the treated um, mesocosms and which species are associated with the control uh, mesocosm or which species uh, are lost. That these species are lost and these species are gained. So to sum it up, so we have our raw data. We transform generally this uh, raw data because we have uh, might have high abundance, a uh, high abundant taxa, and we want to remove their weights. We have then we model them using a partial RDA. So our explanatory variables is time treatment and the interaction. And from this partial RDA, we can display a lot of information. So one is the side scores and the time course of the side scores. We can display the species scores, which is the species that are um, responsible for this pattern that we see here in the uh, time course. And we can also perform, perform a significance test. So we can perform if the axis is significant or our uh, treatment is significant. So in publications you generally see also a lot of numerical output. So you can display or ask uh, or ask uh, how much variation is displayed on the first axis. So uh, does the first axis capture my main patterns and the data that I have. As I said, you can test the significance of the axis, the predictors. However, you need to take into account that we have repeated measures. So this means that the data points are not independent. They are temporarily autocorrelated. So we need to take this into account and this is done well, when we are shuffling the data using the permutations. You can also report if there is uh, any recovery, so you can simply for every time point perform an RDA and check if uh, treatment still has, has an effect. And from this uh, you might also um, calculate a no effect concentration. However, this is not easy because these experiments are often uh, rarely replicated. So we cannot use permutations, and this makes uh, our problems. So how, are, how is such a plot interpreted? Well, I, I already said this all. So uh, the y-axis, the x-axis shows the time course, and the y-axis shows the deviation of the treatments from the control. So we can easily spot also um, here at zero we have the application, so here happened something, we have an effect. But then after some weeks, after 20 weeks here, well, we don't see such a big difference and this is an indication for recovery. We also see which species are responsible, so here this species like Binitent and Amosp, uh, they are increasing with the treatment, so perhaps because of uh, biological interactions. And here, Canora or Cleon, uh, Cleon, these are decreasing because they are on the opposite side. Uh, however, you have to be careful with these species scores and also check the univariate plots because the species scores display only species that are associated with the main pattern, which is the pattern that you see here. No effect, then in effect after application and then a recovery. If a species doesn't show such a pattern, then it won't get a high species score. 
and you also have to downweight your binding taxa and there is some guidance that you, you often, often use this uh, LN transformation but uh, generally you are free to use which transformation you want. There are also some alternatives as you might know the RDA um, um, uses the linear model and perhaps this model is not the best for accounts so David Walton came up with an idea for multivariate GLMs so with this method you can it's a fully parametric method you can uh, model count data it has a lot of advantages you can do uh, residual testing uh, checking and so on but it's also uh, very uh, computational intensive you might also say, ah, why should I bother with multivariate techniques? I just take some diversity measure like the Simpsons index or the Shen index or perhaps here the special SPEAR species at risk indicator. However, um, these all condense the multivariate response of many, many, many species into one small number. So you lose a lot of information with these techniques. Moreover, you cannot infer about uh, single species responses. Okay, I talked enough. Let's see how we can do this in R. I put already the script online. So you can simply follow me. Sorry for that. So to perform the principal response curves, we will use the wagon package that we already used uh, for the RDA and NMDS and so on. Um, we will use uh, the data that was also mentioned in the uh, in the publication of uh, Power Funding Bring and Kaita Park. It's a, called Purifos data. This data set um, consists of 132 observations of 178 taxa. The data are already log transformed, so we can look here. So each row is one observation, so it's uh, week 4, concentration 1, and here we have the different species. Uh, next, we need to create the uh, environmental variables, they are not chipped with the wagon package, but it's very easy. So if you look at them again, uh, the environmental data has, has also 132 observations. And we have three variables inside, so the ditch, this is simply the mesocosms where the data was uh, sampled, so the replicate week. We have uh, samples on 11 weeks, and those uh, is the dose that we applied. So it's uh, zero, it's the control, 0 0.1 microgram per liter purifos, and so on. Performing PRC in R is very easy. You can use simply the PRC function, and this function takes the species data and, and then two vectors of the treatment and the time. That's what these bo are both stored in our environmental data. We can run this, and then we can look at the numerical output. Uh, this output should look familiar to you because it's actually the same as uh, in RDA. So here we see the constraint variance. So this is the variance uh, that is explained by, by treatment and the interaction of treatment with time. So it's 33% here. And we have the conditional, which this is the variance that we partialed out. So time, only time 
explains 22% and yeah, unconstrained is the residual variance. Down here you see the, the eigenvalues and one information that you might give is the proportion of variance displayed on the first axis. So if you can extract the eigenvalue from this uh, PRC object, it's stored here in CCA eigen, so the this would be the first eigenvalue, which is 25, it's the same as here. And the proportion of variance uh, of this eigenvalue is simply the eigenvalue divided by the sum of all eigenvalues. So it's 26% in this case. We can also perf uh, perform a summary. So if you do that, we get uh, species scores here. And down here, the time course, the side scores. You can make a plot directly. So you see here the time course and also the species. However, the species are very cluttered. We have a lot of species and most of them do not respond. So here I display only species using the select um, attribute argument. So here I check which species have scores greater than one absolute speed uh, scores and I select only those so you see it's not uh, not so much cluttered anymore as I mentioned uh, the samples are not independent because they are from the same mesocosm just on different types so this clearly <coughs> Um, uh, violates the assumption of independent samples. So we have to take this into account. In a parametric framework you could add a special correlation structure using the temporal correlation, but here we are testing using permutations and we sim can simply uh, shuffle in a special way. So this can be done here with the permute package. So this specifies how we want to shuffle our data. We don't shuffle it randomly anymore. We put some design on this uh, shuffling. Well, and then design is, um, well, the mesocosms, the, the, time the, the time series of the mesocosms can uh, be shuffled freely. However, within one mesocosm, because there we have this uh, autocorrelation within one mesocosm, we don't shuffle. And this is used to uh, take this into account. Uh, as an RDA, we can run a permutation test. So here using first equals true, um, we simply test the first uh, axis. So here it says, okay, uh, it's significant and explains the variance that I said, 25% or something. We can also test the terms. So we have uh, three terms. We have the time, we have the treatment and the treatment time interaction. So here you see, okay, uh, the dose is significant and also the uh, interaction with time is significant. But well, why do, don't we have here zero variance and no p-value? Well, this is clear because we removed the effect of time, of weeks in this case, from our model. So we cannot test it because it's not there. And we can also perform an overall test. So does our PRC model uh, explain anything? So here I use only 99 permutations, which is specified here. So you should generally use much more, I just put 99 here because it's faster. So if I do it again, I get an another p-value. However, if you put, um, make 1000 permutations, this stabilize, st stabilizes. So 
So we might be interested on the time course. So here we have an indication that after after uh, application and zero, we have an effect, but then this effect seems to diminish. There seems to be some recovery. And we want to check if there is a recovery. So what we can do, we can perform a simple RDA at every time point. So this does this code. You don't have to know this code. It's Actually, it's not very complicated, but uh, we don't assume that you know this. So here I just initialize an empty object. And here we have a for loop. So this means for every week, so we have the weeks minus 4, minus 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and so on. For every week, well, we subset the data that we have only uh, uh, the data from this week. Then we perform an RDA without time here, because uh, we are only looking at one time point. And then we are performing a permutation test. Uh, for every week, fit a uh, subset of data, fit an RDA, perform permutation test. You can do this. And if you look now at the structure of this new object, uh, you see it's very complicated. So um, we have 11, uh, a list of 11 because we have 11 weeks. And if you look at one week, you get the, the results of the RDA and also the results of the permutation test. So these are stored in the and these two parts, RDA and ANOVA. So if you look at ANOVA, we get only this part. And here I show you how you can extract the p-value, which is here. So this says simply apply to each element of RDAS, 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 or we want to call it, um, this function. So this is just go here, yeah, RDAS ANOVA, and get the, f the first row and the uh, uh, fourth column. So it's the p-value here. So then we get this. So we have the p-values for the RDA for each week. And we see, well, uh, before the experiment, there is no difference. Well, directly after the application also not, because the test item takes some time the, that the effect takes place. And then after, from one week to, uh, from week one to week eight, we see that there is uh, a statistically significant effect of the treatment, but from week 12 on, we can't see this effect anymore. Note if you read the paper um, that uh, the results will differ because they used uh, those as a continuous variable. Here I use it as, as a categorical variable. So that explains the difference to the paper. So, although it's Criticized the NOEC, the no observed effect concentration, it's still the standard statistic that is reported for mesocosm experiments. So I show you how you can uh, infer your NOEC from this. Calculate the NOEC, well, it's very similar to what we did uh, before with this uh, RDA at each week. However, here for, for each week, we fit a PCA. Well, why? If you look at one week, we have here only uh, uh, two replicates per treatment. So uh, we have, I don't know, 10 experimental units in total. And this is not enough if you want to do some shuffling because you cannot shuffle it that often. So, what you do here is you, you f fit a PCA and then you uh, take the 
scores from the PCA and compare these um, using universe statistics. So it's a little bit like this either indir indirect gradient analysis. So this piece of code does for each week subset the data, fit a PCA, extract the side scores, scaling one, from the first axis, fit a ANOVA, this is not, yeah, fit a ANOVA to these scores, and then uh, perform a multiple comparison using here Dunnet contrasts. Oh. Again, we want to extract the results. So this is a more complicated function. I just show it the result. So here at week one, we see um, well, treatment uh, three is significantly different. Yeah. So it's this one, six microgram per liter would be the NOC at this time point. So if you look at um, At the time point 12, well, nothing is significant anymore. At the time point 2, it's also 3. Time point 0 point 0.1, well, nothing is significant. So, you can go through them and we would see that the overall NOEC would be 6, uh, would be 0 0.9 microgram per liter because the 6 microgram per liter is the lowest concentration that shows an effect. So 0 0.9 would be the concentration that shows no effect. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening.